everybody. Martin the Flickin' Feathers again today, and I'm tying another old school saltwater pattern. Uh, this is Lefty's Deep Diver. This well known in the Deceiver and all that. Uh, but it's a good pattern nonetheless. As with all the recent videos, it can be found in Lefty's book, Saltwater Fly Patterns. Um, See in the picture there. It's a it's a good pattern. Um, obviously, it's quite a big fly. Fairly easy to tie. What's for a range, imitating a range of bait fish. Pushes a bit of water, and certainly catches fish. Now, as always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel got access to the online content including the fly tying lessons on zoom uh, as well as being entered into the giveaways for the flies tied on the channel alternatively you can like the video, share the video, watch all the way to the end comment that all helps the channel to grow so I've got my hook and my vice uh, I'm tying this on a 4.0 Gamakatsu S10S 4H very similar to the SL12 this hook uh, very strong, use a high quality hook tie these from say 2.0 to 6.0 um, and I'm running on some Danvils and uh, white this is 210, it's one for I'm using actually um, use 210 if you like now for eyes, I'm using tungsten eyes, I'm using the Fuller Mill Tungsten Streamer eyes. And these are 5mm, right, so they're a good big eye. Oops, they're heavy, right, which is what we want on this part. So I'm going to tie them sort of closer position, basically. Sort of just about a third of the way along the straight se section of the shank. Get them nice and secure over and under. Plenty of wraps under and over. Plenty of wraps. And then I like to get a good bed of thread on because I'm and then a big bunch of material at the back here. And I can even come in a wee bit of head cement. Right. I don't use super glue in the salt water flies because it's it rehydrates, it goes crusty and it's not actually it doesn't actually end up doing in. Um if you've only got to use the fly one day and then it's destroyed it probably doesn't matter but the the head cement is actually a better choice for a durable fly. Now tail, you're looking at for this size. I'm going to use a uh, ten to a dozen saddle feathers, right? And you just want cheap. Buy the bulk bulk pack of Chinese strong saddle. And I'm not even that fussed about, like, they don't need to line up. I mean, I want them sort of roughly within a certain range, but if there's some that are a half inch shorter, that's fine. And I'm not going to tie them in in any particular way, you know, I'm, I'm just going to let them sort of be all over the shop, right? Just looking, I might, I might grab another two just to thicken up a bit. This, some of these feathers are just a wee bit in the small side, a bit in the, I've picked it a bit in the wispy side. Uh, there's a nice one, in. added them a bunch and that's another nice one. Nice one. 
and add it to my buns. Right? And as I say, they're all different lengths, right? They're all different uh they're slightly different shapes and different lengths, but that that's okay, right? You don't if the tips don't line up they all sort of swim better. Right, now length, I'm going to tie these. Wait, I might get sort of as much of the hack out of them as as much of the tail out of them as I can. I'm going for quite a big fly here, right? But really, bait fish, especially sort of larger bait fish imitations, I would say you're looking. You want that hook in like the front, the first third or quarter, right? For the if the fish are targeting the head on a big bait fish, so. That, that kind of lets you think about how you're going to size it. Now I've just sat them in, I've caught them on, just got to make sure they're sort of on top of the hook. And you've got a good few tight wraps. And I've got my, my big scissors. I'll come in and I'll just cut these out as best I can. No trying to be too fussy and too neat, just get them out. You, If you can get some kind of taper that's nice, it helps It helps you when you're tying later. So I've got this now, this sort of bunch, and at this stage I can still sort of force it a wee bit because I've no really consolidated things. I've got to just throw a few wraps under, like this. I mean, you've, you can see that I've tied them down into the fluff, so I've got a bit of stiffness in the butts here anyway. It won't be very foul prone, but it does no harm to take a few wraps around the butt there. That just sort of cocks them up slightly and protects against the fouling. Good. Now, as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, belt and braces, get some cement on that, this is all absorbent material so you can put a fair amount of cement, it'll soak in, it'll bond to the stuff below it on the thread base, and then what I'm going to do, now that I've got a bit more uh, grip and thread torque on the shank, I'm going to come through the eyes again, right? And I'll do my yoke wraps as well. Just before I really lock things down, I'll just make sure that I've not moved them. And then come in really tight. And that'll make them very, very secure, right? That's just those the, the, coming down the shank, tying some stuff in and coming back up, and then wrapping them again. That's way stronger, even without head cement. That's way stronger than one tie in and then super glue or something. Right? It's, 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 if you try it, you'll be amazed at how how much. I mean, you really can't even move them. So next, we've got to get a bit of. I'm using blue craft for. Um, in the book, in Lefty's book, he recommends bluefish here, but craft are similar. Nice wee chunk. Up to you. I mean, I'm tying just the one that's in the the, the colour scheme that was in the, the book, just for the sake of the video. But um, olive works really well, white and olive, and an olive head. Um, any of the sort of colour schemes, you know. White and chartreuse, white and grey, right? Uh, just I mean, sort of imagine a bait fish is really what you're aiming at. Boy, I'm just going to sort of put a wee taper in the butts there just to help smooth the run off with the thread. And I'm going to tie these sort of little shoulders almost like if I was tying a 3D fly, like the Popovix fly. Um,
just uh, okay, so I arrange that, make sure they're the same size. Just come around. Same length. Tie them in, make sure the sort of split by the uh, hackle tail. And again, I'll just sort of cut that unevenly. I'm starting to get that wee taper. If you end up with a bump, it's fine because you'll hide it, but like the, the taper just makes your life that wee bit easier. So I'm going to stick a couple of accent feathers on. These are grizzly dyed, a kind of dunny blue. And I mean, you can make these longer. I like them. I like to come a wee bit shorter. Uh, sort of remel I mean, whistlery almost. The accent feather on a whistler. Um, and this, I suppose this fly is similar, you know, it's got something to the, the Dan Blanton about it. Um, it's not unlike a, a Sarmal Mac in appearance, although the, the way it's weighted will make a difference to how it swims and fishes. But, uh, aye, it's, you know, there's a, there is a style to it. So, I've just tied them in. Let's see. That looks okay. I'll just maybe just adjust this one slightly. I'll come back up with my thread. And I'm not been too fussy about like covering this completely with thread yet because I'm going to put in my flash and then I'm going to cement it again. I've used this here in Japan for sea bass in the, in the autumn when the, the the bait's a bit bigger. Um, most of the time here in Tokyo it's all bait anchovies, but in the autumn the, the big shad and the scads and things turn up. And this can be quite good. Um, it's no bad dredging offshore. Well, a fast shooting head system. For kingies and that as well. Um, probably, I imagine it was developed for striped bass. Uh, but anytime you need a big sort of, or big, I mean, it's not that big nowadays, I suppose, but a big weighted thing for dredging. This is no bad at all. Right, so that's just some flash about there. Just ordinary flash of boo, no salt water size or anything. I've just got to sort of stagger the ends of the your side, which was the long end that was left. Just make sure there's no any big long bits in my way. I'm just going to use a hair clip just to keep that out of the way. And then Again, I was too fussed about the touching wraps because I want the, the cement to be able to soak in here into the butts of that, uh, craft far into the stem of the, the accent feather and then I can cover it with thread, force it, force it into the material, the thread will soak it up as well, you end up with a very nice robust uh, underbody. any excess. And I'm going to get a wee bit of wee plume of red marabou. The stuff I've got is it's, it's fluorescent red. It's, it's, it's almost kind of orangey but if you prefer like a crimson, like blood red by all means use that. So we'll just tie this in by the tip. Fold it back. Catch that off. And it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm allowing a wee gap there, right? So that that 
makers are nice and then you don't need to have a hard against it right? I'm just going to fold that and wind it just take your time Now in the picture in the book actually it looks like there's a maybe a white marabou plume behind the or the red but it's quite hard to see um, and it isn't listed in the dressing so this is how I've tied it since I discovered it just as the listed pattern um, if I could see if you could see it a bit clearer I'd maybe have made the addition. So that's fine, nice wee marabou collar. Just trim away the waist. Just moisten this. And then the head, I'm going to use really bugger marabou. Willy Bugger Chenille, sorry, Marabou. Um, just get that tied in. I forgot my clip. Put my wee hair clip just to keep that out of my way. So I've tied that in by the button. I've tied it behind the dumbbells. I'll bring my thread to the front. And I'm going to sort of build it up behind. Okay, pull, make sure it's nice and tight. I'll come under, sort of figure it through the eyes and that'll bring me back again and this will let me sort of build this up and don't be don't be shy with this, right? Uh, you want to kind of bulbous head this that's got to help um, create turbulence which is what you want, right? You want that fly swimming See how you're looking, I'm not too keen on just how I've got that sitting, so I'll just go back. You can always go back if you don't like something. Um, I always think, look, I always kind of think it never really sits the same. I never seem to get it the same way twice. Because this chenille, this chenille head, it's like a block, right, and it creates, you know, it creates a vortex behind it, which helps the marabou to you know collapse and. Just trim that away. Fold this, the, the wee tag end back. Catch it in. See how it is. I'll do it. Just clean up the head. And we can whip finish twice. Moisten the marabou now slightly just to stop it wafting around and then I'm going to cement my thread wraps and also I'm just going to splodge it onto the chenille simply because it will set up and it will mean that the chenille doesn't allow water to pass through it makes it more durable but as well, but look, that's not really my concern. The, the 
the Willie Burgers and Eels very durable anyway. Um, but when this sets up, what you end up with is like a solid mass. Right? The spaces between the fibres, a lot of them are filled, so there's less there's less pass through, and there is more turbulence created by the head, which, as I say, that's what really makes this back end start wiggling. But there you go. That's left his deep diver. A very effective fly pattern for a range of species. Um, tie some up, give them a go. It's a bit unconventional looking nowadays, but probably at the time it was tied, you know, there was a lot of similar looking flies around and the mechanics work, so it's worth a go. Hope you enjoyed that, hope it was useful. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tell guys, bye.